listening to the Project Ignite podcast, where real digital entrepreneurs reveal their very best tips, tools, and strategies to help you ignite and grow your online business. ProjectIgnite.com. Your digital business starts here. Now, here's your host, Derek Gale. Welcome back to another episode of the Project Ignite podcast. You guys know the deal. This is a podcast. We skip the hype, all the BS. We bring you real entrepreneurs who are here to share their actionable tips, strategies, and tools to help you grow your digital business. And uh, this episode is brought to you by ideabot.ai, which is a powerful free tool, which yours truly has just launched. And uh, it is awesome. If you're looking for keyword research, article ideas, uh, video ideas, blog posts, product ideas, you name it, this tool is going to help you drill down into any niche and figure out what people are looking for. And the good news is, is you can start this entirely free. You don't have to subscribe to these overpriced keyword research tools that cost $100 a month. Uh, so uh, go check it out, ideabot.ai. And uh, if you haven't figured this out already, this is your host, Derek Gale. And today we're going to be diving deep into a topic I get asked a lot of questions about, and that is social media content. And there's probably three questions that I get asked a lot. And that is first, what do I post on my social media page or feed? How two is how often do I post? And number three is I posted, but crickets, nobody's engaging. What do I do? So hopefully to help us answer some of these questions uh, today is our guest who's a business growth consultant who's uh, dedicated to helping business owners like yourselves rise above their challenges, their barriers, and just achieve your goals. And uh, again, same with him after constantly hearing from his clients about the challenges of creating content for social media, lead magnets, webinars, you name it. Uh, he recently launched up a really cool tool called Rise Up Creatives, and it's a membership platform to help uh, digital business owners create really cool content, engaging content, and uh, cost-effectively create it and create it in just minutes per day. He's also the uh, host of a podcast called The Inspiration Rising Podcast and uh, the author of a book entitled Empowered to Rise, uh, The Seek to Embracing Your True Identity, Uncovering Your Superpowers, and Bringing Your Inspiration to the World. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome David Trotter to the show. David, thank you so much for being here today. Derek, it's great to be with you. I appreciate the opportunity. Good. Um, all right. So, you know, actually what I like to do uh, whenever I get a new entrepreneur on the show, uh, before we get into the nitty gritty, I always, I love to hear the journey, right? Um, you've, you've been around, uh, you've done a lot of stuff, you know, from, uh, are you saying I'm old? Is no, that what you're saying? No, you're wise. <laughs> <laughs> wise. I just turned 48 last week. So I'm, I've got 52 years left to live. There you go. That's good. You're not even halfway there. Nope. Not even halfway Not even there. Halfway. That a boy. Um, all right. So, okay. So you've had a six-figure marketing agency. You've l launched a furniture store. Uh, you've manufactured plush toy. It's, and and now this, the the social media content. Give, give us the Coles notes. Who's David Trotter? How did you get into this? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, coming out of high school, um, I actually sensed that I was being called into full-time ministry as a Christian pastor. Mm -hmm. And so I went to college and seminary uh, to be a pastor, met my wife at college, got married in between my junior and senior year. We've been married almost 27 years now. And I went into full-time ministry helping start churches. So in that world, that's called a church planter. You start with you know a couple people and you grow the church. Mm -hmm. I did that for over 10 years. And in the process, um, grew a, a large church, um, had a dozen staff or so, but I was a workaholic, Derek. I mm -hmm. was um, just trying to fill that void within myself with accomplishments and growing and helping more people. And I ended up having a burnout experience about 12 years ago where I hit rock bottom. Yeah. And I had to shift my value system from performance and productivity to peace that if I couldn't cultivate peace in my uh, own self, that I wouldn't be a good husband, I wouldn't be a good father, I wouldn't be a good business owner or whatever it might be. And so I shifted, ended up starting marketing business. And uh, in the process, that freed up my time to be able to do lots of different things. 
And one of those was starting a plush toy uh, robot business in uh, China. I had never manufactured anything in China. Started with a couple of partners. That was so fascinating to go through that process. Mm-hmm. We sold that business. And then I started really taking that desire to make an impact in the world and funneled it into films. And so I wanted to draw attention to orphans in India because I had done a lot of humanitarian work in India. Hmm. So a buddy and I um, produced and directed a documentary um, on orphans in India called Mother India, Life Through the Eyes of the Orphan. We spent about two weeks with 25 orphans living alongside a railway in Southern India and even spent the night with them one night out on the streets. That was a crazy experience. That film ended up getting picked up by Netflix and was on uh, Netflix for two years, 2012 to 2014. And since then, Netflix has shifted its business model and really doesn't pick up independent documentaries like that, you know, really anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got kind of hooked on that and I ended up producing three more documentaries on social justice issues. Another one on sex trafficking in the United States and made an impact in that way. But I was finding that those films were taking a year to two years of my time. And, you know, you kind of put that out into the world and it makes an impact. But I wanted to be making an impact on more of a day-to-day basis rather than a year-to-year basis. Mm -hmm. And so late 2018, I told my wife, I'd really like to move more toward into coaching and consulting um, because of all my background um, and uh, coordinating podcast. And so she said, well, who would be the target audience? Who would be the people that, you know, you'd want to connect with? And we both agreed that the group of people that had primarily been impacted by my work, whether it was ministry or marketing or movies, was primarily women, kind of in the 30 to 50 year age mm-hmm. category. So we launched Inspiration Rising to really highlight and champion female entrepreneurs and business owners. And we've had 180 plus episodes and started the Rise Up Business Academy to help, you know, business owners get started and grow their businesses. And then just recently, obviously, as you mentioned, started Rise Up Creative. So that's kind of the quick version of the well, windy path. Well, and that's interesting because, I mean, that, that did answer one of my questions. Because when I looked at your podcast, I thought, oh, that's interesting. Why did you target women? Because that's yeah. as a male, typically, that's not your f- right the first place to target, right? Sure. Um, sure. But yeah, okay. So that that makes sense. Now that's actually interesting that you started off by launching a church, and I I would love to just even, and we're not going to go deep into that today, but yeah, yeah, that that must have been a lesson in marketing. Oh, it's all about entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah. It, people don't realize. Uh, churches are businesses sure. in reality because you have to have people there getting them involved in volunteerism and they have to donate in order for the church to exist. Mm-hmm. So my wife and I um, helped start a church in Orange County, California that grew exponentially. It was in 1997. I was 25 years old. I was the associate pastor. The church grew from about a hundred to a thousand within the first year or two. Wow. It just exploded. And I was way over my head, uh, <laughs> the 25 year old, you know, just trying yeah. to figure this out. About five years later, I ended up starting um, my own church from about a dozen people Mm -hmm. and grew it to 750 with three different locations and a dozen staff. And it's, I I really took the angle of marketing. Like with that church, we ended up, um, I bought a city bus and wrapped it with our logo on the city bus Mm -hmm. and we would take it to events. We got a little Scion XB when they first came out, put a huge sound system in the back, wrapped the car to match the bus. We gave out branded water at events running events, you know, you know, wherever we could go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was, was, uh, of course, a come as you are rock and roll style church where people's lives were transformed. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very much an entrepreneurial marketing style approach. Yeah. Well, it's fascinating because I, you know, watching the churches now that are, are thriving when I think overall church attendance has been dropping if I am correct. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. But you have these churches that have a model and are taking that more forward thinking approach in terms of relating to the younger demographics and they're starting to thrive again. Um, I I forget that. Is it Hillside? Um, Hillsong. uh, Hillsong. Thank you. Hillsong has been a a fantastic example of that. Um, And I don't know much about it, but I know it, it's been on a massive growth trajectory. But what you're talking about sounds like a very similar approach and model in terms of marketing. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are upsides and downsides to that, of course, Mm -hmm. because when you employ strategies that are um, seeking to draw people in and get them excited about something, um, it it can begin to feel manipulative, Um, especially from my perspective, having done it for 10 years you know, the way to get the church to grow is to get people to spend more of their time and invest more of their money. Sure. And when you're using God or spirituality to motivate people to do that, it can start to become a little icky, you know? But I mean, ha- and, and, and this is a really interesting conversation, but hasn't that been religion since the beginning of time? Well, a lot of shame and guilt has been yeah. used in order to motivate people to do things. Right. So I wouldn't say with the marketing, you're basically motivating people to, hey, you want to have meaning in your life. Mm-hmm. You want to develop relationships with other people that are meaningful and connecting. Mm-hmm. And you want other people to experience this too, right? And you want people, and the part that gets wrapped in there that's more subtle these days is if you don't get your friends or family to come to church and connect with Jesus, they're going to hell. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, that's not said as abrasively as it used to be probably back in the seventies or eighties, but that's the bottom line. That's what you know. Right. So, so there's a lot of different layers of motivation. And I think that even connects with me now, as I, you know, teach other people marketing, it's like, how do you really connect people to the end result that you're wanting to share? Mm -hmm. So there's a problem, there's a pain point, there's a desire. So how are you aligning your message with that result that you're not selling your program, you're selling the result, but how are you doing it in a way where you know, you genuinely believe in this product, Mm -hmm. that it's genuinely helping that person. You're not just out to make a buck. I, you know, a lot of the women that I work with, they don't like sales. They don't like marketing because they don't, they've seen the funky parts of it. Yep. So I tell them, I go, you guys, I don't see any of this as sales. It's service. Like if you don't feel like you're genuinely serving someone and helping them, then you're selling the wrong, you know, you're presenting the wrong offer. And so when I present it as service that we're genuinely helping people, but there does need to be a financial exchange for that service, then they start to open up to, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can Mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's interesting because a lot of people naturally don't like selling. That's, I think, just people are against that. Um, But I think that's an interesting message for anybody who's like, you know, I don't feel comfortable selling something. Well, then you probably... you probably got the wrong product. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. If you're not passionate about it and yeah. don't see the end result transfer, you know, transformation in somebody's life in some way, then you, you're, you got the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ah, that's interesting. Um, all right. Okay. So, um, I could talk about this. I'd love to pick your brain on that, but that's a whole different, uh, that's probably a whole different episode. Um, <laughs> so let, let's, let's shift gears though. And, uh, let's dive into, the social media side of things, right? So you've recently launched this Rise Up Creatives. And uh, why? What inspired you to launch this? So it's the same questions that you were asking at the beginning of the the conversation. What do I post? Mm -hmm. How do I do it? It feels overwhelming. I don't have access to like a professional camera. How do I take pictures of myself? What do I write about? Um, People are not responding. It's all of those questions. And so social media has become at, it is the town square of our world. You know, yeah. you have yeah. to engage in social media in some way. It's just required unless you've got a very unique business, you've got to have a presence there somehow. And so if you're going to do that, like let's do it in a way that one feels authentic, but two really saves you time because it can be such a time suck creating, you know, stuff for, sure. for social media and in a way that you're developing real relationships you know, a lot of people, when they begin, start with the pray or the spray and pray, you know, approach. Just spray it out there and mm-hmm. pray to God. You're right. Yeah, it's yeah. Gonna, <laughs> somebody's going to yeah. touch it. And it's like, okay, well, rather than having this spray approach, you know, let's really see that the person on the other side of that phone that's looking at your feed, that's a real person, like a real person with real needs. And how can you cultivate a real relationship with them? Right. Okay. So, uh, and you're dead right. I, and look, I've, I've, I've done, you know, I start up something on social. I'm like, Oh God, what am I going to post? Right. And, and, and 
you know, there's so many tools that exist out there that claim they make it easy. But the fact is, is they're typically just design tools that don't help curate any messaging or et cetera, et cetera. So now before we get into the what you should do, let's get into the maybe start off with the what you shouldn't. And so what mistakes are you seeing people commonly make in social right now Mm -hmm. with content in particular? Yeah, well, the number one uh, mistake is an overzealous entrepreneur who just posts about their product and that's all they talk about is the product, 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 product. And it's just pitching constantly. That's the number one mistake of an overzealous entrepreneur. Um, Others are inconsistency. You know, so if they're not overzealous, then it's just like, oh, okay, well, I joined this challenge and they got me to post five days in a row as part of the challenge. And then after that, I just, I gave up. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I think it's kind of one of those two extremes, either overzealous on promoting product or lack of consistency. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, And that begs the question that I think a lot of people ask then is, okay, what is the balance, right? I mean, we do social because we want to grow our business, we have to have a bit of a commercial slant to it. Of course. How do you, how do you balance that? What's the, what's the right frequency and is there a perfect frequency? Yeah. Well, in terms of the frequency that really is dependent on your ideal, your client, you know, your target audience. Most people are posting five days a week, Monday through Friday, because so many people are off social media on Saturday, Sunday. Other people have an approach of, I want to do Saturday, Sunday because other people are taking it off. Mm -hmm. Right. So it just depends. I, I think realistically, it's probably four to seven days a week that you should be posting just because the algorithm can only work with what you put out into the world. If you don't put it out there, the algorithm's not going to go, wow, you know, Derek really, he would prefer this image and this caption. I'm going to write that for him and put it out there. No, it can't create something out of nothing. You Mm -hmm. have to at least have something for the algorithm to be able to push out in the world. We train people to post in seven different categories because these seven categories we believe are really contributing to people increasing no like, and trust. Um, so the first category is my life. Now the assumption is with these seven categories that this is some sort of personal brand. Mm-hmm. There's a person behind the brand representing it. So mm-hmm. my life, I want to know something about what's going on in your world behind, you know, your, your, your yeah. family, your cat, your dog, you know, whatever. The second is my why. Why did you get into this? Because if you can tell a compelling why story, then it makes me want to join your, you know, your team. Uh, the third is behind the scenes. What's going on behind the scenes in your business? I want to see a picture. You know, I was looking on your Instagram, the pictures of behind your computer, you know, because I'm mm-hmm. seeing you straight ahead. Now I'm seeing it from the other perspective. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You know what I mean, just the behind the scenes of podcasting or business or talking to your clients, whatever it might be. Um, the fourth is inspirational. Hey, give me some, inspire your clients, your potential clients somehow, whether it's a quote, it's a story, whatever it might be. Life and business learnings. So many of us put our best foot forward and we're not sharing, hey, these are the challenging things that I've gone through in my life or my business that when you share those types of learnings, not only am I learning from, you know, you, what you're sharing, but I'm also seeing that you're a real person. There's humility there. There's not a sense of like, I've got it all together. Mm-hmm. Uh, The fifth or the sixth, I should say, is product and service. Like actually, here's what I'm promoting, right? Whether it's a product, whether it's a service, whether it's a lead magnet, something that's a straight up promotion of this is what you're doing. And then the seventh is benefits, benefits to your ideal client. What are, not to say that you wouldn't include those when you're promoting your product or service, but we need to be just be straight up with, here's how your life is going to be different. Here's how your pro, your pain point, your, you know, your problem or your desire is going to be met. So with those seven categories, I'm finding that people are able to encourage people to, uh, you know, know, like, and trust them. Now, how do you, how do you actually get engagement? That's another conversation beyond the seven, not a conversation, but we can obviously talk about it beyond those seven categories. Excellent. That was probably one of the best breakdowns of what you should post that I've heard. Um, mm. So for everybody listening, that that I actually wrote that list down because that was, that was brilliant. I love that. Um, so let's talk now frequency. So we have all of these different things. Is there a rhythm that you follow with these? Is there a, yeah. 
Yeah, great question. So one of the things that we train people to do in Rise Up Creatives is plan a month of content in advance. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to get the amount of time that you spend on content every day down to minutes if you've got it pre-planned. It also means that you're more likely going to be consistent because you've already got it planned ahead as opposed to waking up and saying, what am I going to plan today? So if you look at the calendar month, um, the first thing that I encourage people to do is to um, choose holidays that you want to leverage for your business. So we all, we, wherever we live, we have holidays that are coming up like here in the United States, there's mm-hmm. coming up St. Patrick's day. Um, other parts of the globe, they don't even know what St. Patrick's day is. So it really just depends on where you live and denote those holidays because you can tie that into your business somehow. And if you post an image, let's just say St. Patrick's day, for instance, within our um, stock photography, we have this beautiful picture of a St. Patrick's day cake and it's just really looks cool. It's green inside. Well, that's going to catch people's attention on that day because they're already thinking about St. Patrick's day and they're more likely to engage with your post on that day because it's you're, you're uh, piggybacking on a cultural trend. The question is, how do you tie that into your business? How do you talk about luck? How do you talk about leprechauns? How do you talk about the Irish? How do you talk about green beer? How do you talk, you know, whatever, Mm -hmm. tie it in. That's first thing, pick the holidays. Second thing is pick the days that you're going to promote some sort of launch. So you're launching anything in the month. It could be a product or service. It could be a lead magnet or a freebie, or it could be um, you appeared on a podcast episode and you know it's coming out on a certain day and you want to promote that launch of that episode on that day. Mm -hmm. So pick the days now that you want to promote those launches of whatever it is, because you don't want to be doing that every day, right? Maybe once, once a week or so. And then I suggest looking at the two to three days prior to that launch and saying, how can I prepare people for the launch of whatever that is? I'm using that word launch broadly. Okay. We're not talking about a massive launch of a product. We're talking about an average month where you're putting out a new lead magnet or something. Sure. So let's just say your lead magnet is on mindset, right? Powerful, positive mindset. Well, how are you going to, in the two or three days prior to that launch of that lead magnet, get people primed for that? So it could be talking about a life or business learning of how you changed your mindset on one day. It could be the next day talking, uh, having a quote, an inspirational quote about mindset from Jim Rohn or Joe Dispenza Mm. or something, and then breaking that down with a little PS each day. Hey, PS, on Thursday, I've got a special thing that's coming. You don't want to miss it. Hey, the next day, PS, I've got a special download. You're not going to, you know, you definitely don't want to miss it on Thursday. So you're Now you pick the holidays, you got those dialed in on your calendar. Second, you pick the launch, launch days. Third, you're going to map out the two or three days before that launch because you're going to leverage that. Now that you've got that, you've got a few days left in the calendar. You're probably going to fill in those days with my life, my why, behind the scenes, you know, inspiration, Mm -hmm. smattering those in. But we start with the things that you know for sure that you're going to do, then fill in the gaps. Does that, does that make sense? That's yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, and that was a really well, well, um, well explained system. Uh, and, and I think especially for people who are just getting into this, it's so difficult to figure out what do I post? When do I post? And, uh, so I, I assume, I mean, when you're dealing with people, you're coaching them to, okay, set up a content calendar, plan it out, you know, 30 days plus in advance, exactly what you're going to do, uh, stuff like that. Now, one of the things we actually provide we actually provide the calendar. We provide a PDF version every month uh, that has the seven categories on it where you actually fill in the image, you know, and the caption and then have a check mark on which one of those seven, you know, categories works for you. We provide it as a Google sheet as well. So some people like to print and Mm -hmm. write other people like to just type. So sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to throw that. I'm just taking tons of notes here because I am, I, it's funny. I teach social media. I use social media. I use a lot of paid social media. Um, I, I'm just terrible uh, at, you know, I'm the guy that, oh, I do a whole bunch of stuff and then I disappear for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've made it, uh, I'm like, okay, in 2021, because, you know, the last few years I've been so busy building businesses, I've almost neglected my personal brand. I'm like, I got to get my ass in gear and do something about this social. <laughs> and so I, I love exactly how you frame this out. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to, to using what you're building here. Cause I, I guarantee you people are going to breathe a sigh of relief because it's going to alleviate so much of the, mm. the brain power it takes to think, okay, what do I need to come up with? And the creatives and stuff like that. And, yes. um, and so and one of the things that, uh, that if, if you don't mind, yeah, go ahead, go uh, ahead. 
the, uh, one of the things that we provide is we provide 31 image themes each month. So it's 31 stock images that our photography team takes that are lifestyle images. And yeah. we combine those with 31 customizable captions. Yeah. And each one of those captions fits into the seven categories. The key, whether you're using our resource or you just, you obviously your own, we teach a triple S method of a captivating caption, three S's. The first is stop the scroll. You've got to do something in that first line, whether it's a question or a statement that's going to like stop that scroll, whether you're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, it could be a confession. It could be a crazy question. It could be a, mm -hmm. you know, inquire, quote, you got to stop the scroll. Second S is serve with insights. So it's back to that service. Like I've got to provide some sort of insights in the middle of that caption that's going to either educate or entertain or transform. It's got to do something. Mm -hmm. It's got to serve my ideal client. Now you're always aligning those insights with your offer, right? Something down the road that you're going to be, you know, sharing with them. And then the third S is spark a conversation. You can't leave any caption without asking the reader to do something. Yes. Drop an emoji, ask, ask a quick yes or no question, you know, share this with a friend, like whatever it is, you got to get them engaged. So that triple S we write all of our captions through that method. And that's what we teach people. Um, and that, that's the beginning of getting engagement. Of course, mm -hmm. real engagement comes, you've got to engage in other people's uh, content in order for them to find you. Yes. But once they find you, you've got to have something that's going to connect with them. Excellent. Well, that answered the, the next question I had on my list was like, okay, what, you know, how do you create that post that, that actually works, right? Um, and, and gets engagement. Now, I want to go back to something uh, you talked about briefly, you mentioned was the algorithm, right? Training that yes. algorithm to pick up. And this is, you know, again, this is one of those topics that most people have, have no idea how to make it like them, how to share it. And I mean, let's face it, Facebook has been cutting out organic reach, chipping away at it for the last many, many years. Um, so getting that organic reach is difficult. So two questions, what are you doing to get better organic reach? And the second part of that is how are you tying in boosting and, and paid promotion with this? Yeah, so first of all, the bottom line is if people don't interact with your content, the algorithm's not going to show it to them again. Yeah. So they've got to like, share, save, or comment. Like they've got to do something of that nature. And that's why the interaction is so important to spark that conversation. Because if they don't engage with it, they just look at it, they're not going to ever see you again. So you, we've got to get them engaging with your content. That's the number one way to get the algorithm to show it uh, to other people. And same thing with stories. I'm um, using the interactive stickers on Instagram is the number one way to get people to interact, you know, is somehow do a poll slider emoji um, or even things that they can um, take a screenshot and then add their, their answers to it and then tag you. We provide all of those templates uh, for custom graphics inside of our graphic design studio. So people can mm. use those for their stories. So that is the way that we've got to get people interacting with your content. So the algorithm will show it. Um, the second part, remind me the second part of your question. Oh, uh, how much of this is organic and how much are you paying? In Paid, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, man, boosting as, you know, most people will say is not, a, you know, helpful. And so I don't encourage people to do that because really? of the ability to track it, like the ability to track it as well. And, you know, dial in on their audience. Um, I'm no expert in Facebook ads sure. area. I will tell okay. you that, but I'm just following the instructions of people who are, that is what I have, you know, been following. So my yeah. own uh, strategy is using the, you know, business.facebook.com, the whole uh, back end. I teach people how to do it, but our strategy with Rise Up Creatives is we are helping the person get their organic content together. Sure. And yeah. They also um, can use our graphic design studio to create graphics for ads, but our focus is not teaching people how to create ads and advertisements. Um, we leave that to other people. Our lane that we've chosen to stay in is how to help people stand out and save time with, you know, organic creation of material. Okay. All right. That makes sense. All right. Um, Facebook versus Instagram. Are you dealing with those differently? Uh only, 
only in the terms of the size of graphics, yeah. but it, not in terms of like approach, you know, obviously hashtags and Instagram and avoid, you know, kind of not dealing with that with Facebook because we all know that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it really, it's the same approach and we're encouraging people to move toward LinkedIn um, as well, because that's such an opportunity. Sure. Yeah. Um, even with personal, even with personal brands, you yeah. know, we think, oh, it's just business, but no, no, no. Those people, like they need mindset. They need, you know, help with spirituality. They need help with coaching. Like, mm-hmm. so we're not, we're encouraging people strongly to get involved with LinkedIn if they're not already. Right. Okay. So oh, oh, you think I'd shut off my phone um, before I record a podcast. It. So uh, there you go. Um, oh, so, okay. So on, uh, just to clarify, you're taking the same stuff. If I create something, I would push it out. If I have, because most people are on both channels, right? So I'd push it out on Facebook and I would push it out on Instagram. Same thing, just different size. Correct. Okay. Correct. And, and oftentimes it can be the same size if it's, you know, a square image, sure. verticals, obviously for stories. But um, if we're talking about an image that's connected to a preview on Facebook, you know, we have mm-hmm. the horizontal previews for the Facebook cover, you know, uh, images. Um, but generally, most of the clients that we're dealing with, they're just focusing on square images, yeah. you know, that are going, that are being pushed out everywhere. Gotcha. Okay, so now let's dig into the story side of things. Okay, what are you seeing right now? More people getting better engagement and reach with stories or with posting in, in the standard feed? Uh, without a doubt, without a doubt, stories. Yeah, and yeah. reels, reels are huge. Um, but stories, one of the reasons why we provide so many story templates is because stories are huge right now. Yeah, and I'm I'm hearing from our clients that you know if they're doing uh, a big launch of let's just say whether it's a lead magnet or product or something of that nature, and they post that launch image or video, if they do polls right after that image, multiple kind of like either or options that are become, you know, popular. Do you like the mountains or the ocean? Do you like, you know, sweet or salty or what, you know, all those crazy either or that when you get people engaging with those polls after your primary post, your primary post will circle back around and be shown to more people. And so it's, uh, even if you are not doing some sort of sticker on that primary post, Mm -hmm. but doing some sort of interactive. I mean, it is so easy to go through those stories. I get sucked into them because I have some of the people that I follow, they're doing 10 of those either or things in a row. And I'm like, oh, I want to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do I want to do that? It's stupid. Yep. But I get sucked into it. Totally, human nature. And then what happens is that person's content that they really care about is more likely to be shown to me because I've just been interacting with their playful little poll. All right. So everybody just listening, that was a super ninja strategy. I love that. Right. So you're, you're creating the, the polls to get people to start engaging. And, and as humans, we just love that. We just, for whatever reason, you ask somebody their opinion, this or this, they want to give it to you. And then that train, and this, this is all about training the algorithm, right? Because the algorithm sees, wow, you just like interacted with like three of their posts in a row. Hey, here's some more. Obviously, it. you want it. Yeah. You love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. That's amazing. Okay. So now I'm, I'm going to take a little bit of a, a right hand turn here because I saw something on your website before we started the interview. And that was, um, and this is totally off topic. Well, not really, a little bit. Clubhouse. Yes. Clubhouse. So. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because I've been, um, you know, I'm, I'm on Clubhouse. I haven't been clubhousing um, in any great depth, uh, but I know it's growing at an absolutely phenomenal rate. Uh, the question is, is, you know, how are people using it for business and, and what results are people getting? You know, it's interesting. I'm, ironically, I've been, you know, I've been sort of pioneering internet marketing stuff since 1998, but I, I have never been a super early adopter because I always want to let other people spend the time to figure out the initial stuff. And then, sure, sure. then I jump in. Um, Clubhouse, what are you doing on there right now? So uh, when I jumped in a couple months ago, I joined a women in business uh, club, yeah. um, which, you know, once again is mildly awkward, but I connected with the person who started it and we developed a, you know, a connection and it's, it's become, I think the one number, maybe number two size club on uh, clubhouse. It's absolutely huge. It's really? taken off. The founder, her name is Christina Holder. And so, and you're working with her on this. 
I'm just behind the scenes. I'm just one of the people in the club. Oh, just okay, okay. So it's not like women yeah, in no, business and David. No, 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 no. I wish, I wish. No, no, no. I just joined it and yeah. because that was my interest. And so I have hosted multiple rooms within that club. Okay. And, you know, 100 plus people will show up and I, I could be on there for anywhere, to, you know, two or three hours easily right. because you set the topic. Yep. I have found that I am less interested as a business owner in going into somebody's room. And let's just say I was trying to get your attention and you were leading the room. And I'm trying to like sit there with my hand up for an hour waiting to like say something to you. The likelihood of you ever remembering me is slim and none. Mm -hmm. So I don't particularly find it to be that helpful. What mm -hmm. I find it to be helpful for is me leading an engaging conversation where I'm doing a combination of teaching and kind of laser coaching with people on a topic, getting their opinion. That's very, very helpful. The second thing that I found that's very helpful, Derek, is um, consumer research. So if I would do a phone call with you, if you would be possibly an ideal client to get you on the phone and ask you, you know, questions, um, for some people that's terrifying. Uh, for some people, it just takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I can actually go into rooms and listen to conversations with my ideal client and hear things that I would have never heard before, especially for me as a male, where I'm sure. learning from things about women just by listening to the conversation. Yes. It is like gold wow. to yeah. hear the heart, the 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 challenges, the yep. issues. And so that's what I one of the things that I teach our clients to do is hey, just lurk and listen. Well, this is like a that's fascinating because and for everybody listening, you know, I've always taught people, hey, you know, this is where forums and Facebook groups and stuff are valuable because you get to see the, you know, the problems people are having and, you know, what they're talking about. But when you actually get to hear somebody actually speaking, not only do you get more depth into the problem, but you get to learn what is the conversation, the language that they're associating, using to associate with this challenge. Yes. So when you are now selling your services or products to that person, you can speak their language. And that is so powerful. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, it's golden. And you can, and let's just say from a, I don't know, a curious, you know, human being perspective, there are all sorts of topics on there, Derek, that I probably would not normally have a conversation about mm -hmm. because they may be a little on the edge of my background or culture, you know, whatever sure. it might be. And there's conversations, everything from training your dogs to, you know, uh, recreational, you know, drugs to all kinds of things. Yeah. And it's like, wow, you could just learn about all kinds of things sure. just by listening in. Ah, that's fascinating. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting that we went forward with all this crazy tech and video and video conferencing and, you know, next thing like VR is starting to grow. And then how did in 2021, the big social movement was voice? Yeah, and I love it because yeah. you get connected. It's so personal. Mm. And that's the difference between spray and pray yeah. and a real at heart for one-on-one -on -one encounters because now you're you're connecting with a real person. This is not just an idea that your business that you're putting out on social media and you connect with people once in a while. No, you're really connecting with people and you have the opportunity to hear their challenges and how do you address those? How can you be there for them? That's why I don't prefer, you know, that I see these things where it's like, oh my gosh, Elon Musk was in this room or Grant Cardone or whatever, you know. It's like, okay, well, that's cool. But he's not going to remember me. And unless yeah. it's some kind of pitch thing where I'm pitching to get like a hundred thousand dollar investment, which I don't need. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be the person that's leading the room. Sure. I want to be the person that's just connecting and being with, and uh, let me tell you the no like and trust factor skyrockets. If sure. you're a genuine person. Yeah. Skyrockets. Hmm. That's awesome. That's amazing. All right. Um, on that note, uh, we're, going to wrap up now. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for, for sharing so much stuff here. Uh, I learned a lot, you know, you gave me a ton of ideas. I've just been taking notes here because it's one of those things, social media, you know, that it's, it's the content overwhelm. What do I post? When do I post it? Right. And I got, I've been doing this for 20 years and I still get there. I'm like, God, what should I send out? Um, and, uh, so for all of our listeners, um, 
where can they, where can they go? Where can they check out your service? Where can they connect with you? Yeah. Well, I'd love to be able to offer, we don't have this on our website. We only mm. offer it through workshops is a seven day free trial. If sure. people are interested, yeah. rise up creative, you just go to rise up creatives.com forward slash join. Yep. And, um, so that seven day free trial, obviously you do put in your credit card, but I show you how to, you can cancel the account anytime within six days, you get 100% access to all of the resources. And there's a 30 minute onboarding video that you're welcome to watch to see it completely how to use the site behind the scenes. It's very intuitive, but um, so riseofcreatives.com slash join and get that free seven day free trial. Amazing. And we will post that in the show notes uh, on the page for this. So uh, David, it was a fantastic conversation. Thank you so much for uh, being here. Great to be with you, Derek. I appreciate it. All right, everybody. Uh, now it's your turn to actually make what you learned here today work for your business. And so you have to apply that final ingredient and that is action. And you know, this was a great interview because there were a lot of, this wasn't theory, this wasn't, you know, uh, hype. This was practical. Here's things you can do uh, and start applying today. So uh, if you've taken notes, and you've got ideas, great go do it. If you haven't written any down, write down at least three things that you can do from this podcast. Take it and actually give yourself a deadline and implement it. And that's how you grow and get results as a business. And as always, if you like what you heard here, um, please just go to your favorite podcast platform. Leave me a rating. Leave me a review. These are the, that's the fuel that keeps me doing this. I love doing it. And uh, as always, uh, if you want the show notes, any links mentioned, you'll find that at project at night, ignite.com. And that's a wrap. We will see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to another info packed episode of the Project Ignite podcast with Derek Gale. Any links mentioned along with an entire transcript of this episode can be found at projectignite.com slash podcast. And to make sure you never miss another episode, go to iTunes or SoundCloud now and subscribe.